Okay, now, from the beginning. Please welcome Director of Platforms, Ralph Howard. Hi. Hi, everyone. That was our best high five to date. And you know what? That high five is really well deserved. Because I've been playing, I've been one of those people that have been pioneering and trying that build out. Actually, I was lucky I got to try it out together with Joachim. And ECS and Burst are really game changers. But what Joachim was talking about was experience or performance for experiences at large scale. What Joachim was talking about was the big. What I'm going to talk to you about is the small. Now, I would almost do like and have the fairy dust come out of my hands. But um, when you develop these small footprint light experiences that can be delivered truly anywhere, anywhere, there are two fundamental components that matter. One of them is size, the other one is speed. Now, we want you, or we want to give you the ability to develop anything you can envision. And you told us you want to build light and fast experiences. To reach the world's next billion devices, your apps need to be light and fast. When thinking about entry-level mobile phones, wearables, IoT, or even the web, your experiences need to be light and fast. And we want to enable you to do that and create these experiences using the Unity Editor, the tooling, the extensibility of the editor, and bring that to that world. So we're expanding Unity to support the development of smaller, lighter, and faster experiences. To do this, we've created a brand new, highly modular architecture and new sets of specifically designed components that you can use using the Unity Editor. You can create these components in the Unity Editor. Now, this results in a smaller, portable runtime that can run on natively on lightweight devices, but something I'm very excited about and always have been very excited about is the web. So let's talk a little bit about that runtime on the web. For web-based deployment, the file size of our compressed core runtime is 72 kilobytes. Kilobytes. So let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me put that in a frame of reference and then tease it out for you. So a song you stream of the internet on average is four megabytes. A web page on average is 2.4 megabytes. A desktop icon, just the icon, the file size of that is 500 kilobytes and we're doing 72 kilobytes. That's cool, right? <laughs> but it's not just about that small runtime. We're combining it with optimization through our asset pipeline to create small assets resulting into small file size. So the data-driven architecture, the exact same data-driven architecture that Joachim just spoke about, combined with those small assets, that leads to fast delivery and startup times. This fundamentally expands what you can build with Unity, all within the editor that you already know, with the assets you already have. Unity will take care of packaging and compressing your assets for you. Now, there's many use cases for such a runtime, and I'm going to ask you to let your imagination run wild. But today, I want to talk about two of them, label ads and games in messaging apps. So let's talk about the first type, playable ads. Um, Playable ads are a demo format for ads that allows people to try your game without actually downloading it. Now, since your games truly are fun and engaging, and I know this, I actually get to play them. I have three small boys that play these games and point at the screen when the Unity logo pops up and says, look, Daddy, your work. It's beautiful to experience what all of you are creating. But to get people to actually download and play them, they need to try it. They need to experience them. And today, it's really hard to provide that experience. Uh, to be fair, you know, it's, it's a lot of work to build them. They're too big. And quite frankly, there's no tooling to build these things. But let me demonstrate what we can do now. So um, our friends at Space Ape, they've shared with us their assets for their game, Fastlane. 
Um, we wanted to use something to show the effects what our small runtime, that data-driven architecture, and that asset pipeline for compression could do for you. Now, I always shake a lot when I get on stage, so I have asked Lucas to actually come and demo together with me. Now, Lucas, uh, before you start, I want to I wanna actually pull some of everyone's attention to something before we start doing this. So Lucas is going to hit that icon for fast lane. But what I want you to pay most attention on is actually the time from the click to playing the game. How about it, Lucas? Are you ready for it? I'm ready. You're not paying attention. Oh, oh I should pay attention. Let, let's watch all of that. Play. How about you play a bit, Lucas? OK. So this game um, is actually using HTML5 and Canvas. Now, why? Well, Canvas is the ultimate way to actually deliver to a wide variety of devices and rendering 2D games. It, it allows you to target all different devices of every end of the scale, from low end to high end mobile. Now, that was a cool example. Lucas, should we try the other one? Sure. Here we go. Let, let's go and try uh, Empires and Puzzles by Small Giant Games, also a playable. So, so was that already cached, or did that, like, did that download while I clicked it? Well, I hope it just downloaded. It would support the statistics we have on that and all the measurements that we do every day. So if you look at this game, it's a lot more rich, right? There's more animation. You can hear sounds. You can hear the music. You can see the animation in the characters. But hopefully, while doing that, you also noticed the really fast download and start time for this application. How's the game? You're having fun? And, uh, yeah, I'll be here for a while. <laughs> well, actually, allow me to go a little bit more in depth, because I think those two demos, can, they, they went by really fast, the actual example. So, Lucas, thank you. I'm, I want to dive in, in a little bit in the numbers. So that first playable ad, Fastlane, it actually, we had two versions of that. One version built without Unity, and one, built, one version built with Unity. So the version without Unity was 2.6 megabytes. That's the runtime, all the assets, everything downloading. The other is actually built with our compression techniques and our new runtime and this data-driven architecture. And it's actually less than 800 kilobytes. Oh, well, that's cool, right? <laughs> but there's another number that's important for this. And it's actually, if we, if we go to the next slide here, Cold load time. The cold load time of the new Unity version of this playable ad was 2.7 seconds. Now, what's cold load time? It's getting the game from the internet, downloading it, putting it on the device, starting it up, and actually player running it. In this case, for the non-Unity version, that was 2.7 seconds. In the Unity version of this, with this newer, smaller runtime, it took 1.3 seconds. So 1.3 seconds from, from getting it from the internet and playing. Now, all of this gives your players a better experience. These are the people that are going to try your game. It gives them a better experience. But why? Well, exactly what Joachim said. Nobody, nobody wants to sit there and wait for something to load. So faster is always better there. But these properties, the size and the load time, they're also critical for building games in messaging apps. We're expanding the base set of components and the runtime, the same runtime that I just showed you, so you can deploy rich and fast message games in messaging apps. Now, I'm going to tease you a little bit here. Currently, we're working with a number of developers in closed alpha, but we are bringing this to you in 2018. Now, a couple of times you heard already, we're your engine team. We are your engine team. No matter where you want to go, no matter what you want to build, no matter if it's big or small, we'll help you get there. Thank you all. So at this moment, I'm the only thing between you and a drink. So I'm going to make this quick and try to get right to the point. I'm going to start with a word. It's, the word's amazed. And what am I amazed by? A few short years ago, um, Unity developers, all of you, were creating a tiny fraction of the world's games and interactive experiences. And what I showed you earlier, you're now making more than half of the world's games. You're making two-thirds, two-thirds of the world's AR and VR. That is absolutely amazing. And 
as I mentioned, this notion that you're an industry onto yourselves, one of the top employers in the world are you. You're hiring more people than entire industry sectors because you as developers are changing the world. You're creating, you're innovating, and you're changing the environment for all the cool things that come next. And that's because of the craft and the commitment you have. Second word I want to talk about is pride. I am seriously lucky and proud to stand before and after the presentations you just saw. Now, there's Brett clicking his heels together and saying, you know, nested prefabs, nested prefabs, it's coming. But what a roadmap. You know, Natasha and Natalia, she goes by both. Um, you know, what she showed with the scriptable lender pipeline, high def, low def, it changes everything. You can make achingly beautiful products. And what we saw from Joachim, our standard once upon a time was to make the best game engine relative to our competition. Make no mistake, Joachim's ambition is to make the best game engine theoretically possible, limited by things like the speed of light compute. It's unbelievable what the ambition is. And Ralph showed you something that we all know. Small is beautiful. Small is fast. Small changes the devices you can reach, the experiences you can create, and the success you can have. So thank you for attending um, our keynote presentation here at GDC in 2018. I hope you'll join me, or several of us actually, upstairs for a drink. And in signing off, got an interesting, cute video to show you for a couple minutes, and then it's off to the races. Thank you, everyone. Could you scooch a little to your right? Me? Yeah, just a little right. Sure. A little bit left. Oh, wow. <laughs> Am I okay now? I don't know what I'm doing. I, I get excited and then I do this. <laughs> so we'll start with an easy question. What is your name and what is your role here at Unity? Uh, John Riccatello and uh, I hang out a lot. I, I, I refrain from saying I'm the CMO because it sounds a bit up its own ass. So what brought you to the United States, to America? I, uh, you know, a large wooden boat from Plymouth. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, I had overnight oats. I can't get into this. You know what, I don't really dig it. I started to hack. Do you have any good stories from that time? Uh, yeah, but it's stuff that I can talk about. <laughs> you can put all kinds of interpretation into that. <laughs> Is there anything I'm supposed to be doing other than answering these questions? No, you're doing Okay. Okay, how technical do you want me to get? That's technical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'm... Um... <laughs> Can you repeat the question again? We have the... Sounds like a huge job. <laughs> yes. That will give unity the longevity. Say it again, but say um, lo longevity. Longevity. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, longevity. Did I just crush your... Uh... Oh, okay. Hey, my oh, mic is slipping. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Nested prefabs. When are you going to get nested prefabs? <laughs> I have a t-shirt. <laughs> I made a t-shirt that said nested prefabs, question mark. I don't think that's what the users want to hear. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, we're in, literally in the middle of an icy void on a ball of rock. Here we go. It's all being edited, right? So I'm just not going to worry about it. <laughs>